Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to Show Studio and our marvellous panel here, who are going to tell us what they feel about London fashion, London menswear fashion, um, as we've seen it in the last two days. I'd like them to start by introducing themselves briefly, but interestingly, we hope. And I think we'll start with you, Simon, and just walk round as well. Okay. My name is Simon Hoare. I'm co-director at Specialised Couture Latex Label uh, at Suko Kudo, which is actually a ladies' wear label. And I am here not because I'm particularly an expert on menswear at all, but rather that the trajectory of our label has been completely separate from any British Fashion Council initiatives, anything along those lines. And I understand that today we're going to discuss quite a lot about how the British Fashion Council initiative has impacted so quickly and so powerfully yes. with menswear. Um, and so I'm kind of the antidote in right. that sense, or mm. coming from the other side of okay. the tracks. So we'll be coming <laughs> back to you, I think. Yeah. Now we have Hilary <laughs> Alexander. Um, my name's Hilary Alexander. I'm a freelance um, fashion editor, stylist, a huge supporter of British fashion um, completely, and a trustee of Graduate Fashion Week, and I just love fashion. But can I just add to that? A general good thing, <laughs> all round good thing. I've known Hilary for years. No one gives as much thought and time to fashion across the world. Oswald, Oswald Bertin. Yeah, uh, Oswald, yeah, Oswald Botang. Um, I'm a fashion designer specialising in menswear. Uh, I've been designing now, embarrassingly now, for a long time. I know. It's been <laughs> 25 years. Maybe 26. 26 years. <laughs> so I've been doing it for a while and I was doing I was designing at a point where um, I'm doing catwalk shows in Paris where there wasn't a platform for menswear in, in the UK. So I'm particularly interested to do this because I'm excited by this new platform that's right. been created. Good. Liam. I'm Liam Fayed. Uh, I guess I'm the random American here. Um, but I did, I, I was born in London. I grew up half my life here and um, my family business is actually Turnbull and Nasser, which is one of probably the oldest English houses that wow. you can think of. Brilliant. Okay. And I've been involved in it since I've been about 12. Oh, wow. um, and I've kind of worked in all areas of the business along with my two brothers. And from that, we started a relatively new brand called Bespoken about three years ago um, that's based in New York, but it still has a very deep-rooted aesthetic to England and Savile Row, um, just for a much younger demographic. So. I think my perspective of this whole week is going to be interesting because I'm definitely hearing it across the pond. Um, I spend a lot of time in, in England and I'm excited to be here. Great. Thank you all very much indeed. To begin with, um, for our team, quite apart from anything else, three of whom have just flown in today, we're going to look at some of the shows that have happened in the last couple of days. and um, We're going to, we hope, engage you into agreeing or disagreeing with us. The first one I want us to look at is Richard Nicholl, the young Australian designer who has made a good name for himself in women's wear and is now tackling men's wear, I think with great elan and style. And if we look to the picture on the left hand side of the screen, we see something which I think is very interesting, which is this idea of splitting the jacket so that it elongates the legs and flatters the person. Now you were saying something about it earlier. Yeah. Would, you, would you like to comment no, no, on that? Well, I, I, I like the fact, because I thought it was two jackets, but I realise now it's mm. actually one jacket that uh, has been basically cut with two fabrications. And I like the relationship between that and the trousers. So it's just kind of, it's almost like you said, it is isn't length in the leg, it's taken up to the waist. So it almost looks like, is that ex extension of the trouser or yeah. the other way? And that's a shorter yeah. jacket, but it's not. I think it's very clever. It's, it's good. I like it. And I tell you, a lot of Englishmen have rather large buns, mm. and it's very flattering from the back. You know, it makes them look good. slimmer like because it. of the contrast with the lighter. I don't like it at all. You don't? No. Why not? Well, firstly, Too I think Trixie? yes, Trixie. I think also, it's probably not the poor model's fault, but I his thighs look like young oaks, and. I, I can't work out whether the trousers are just too tight for him or whether they're meant to be meggings. And the way that the jacket flaps open to sort of... Do, is he wearing a codpiece? 
<laughs> no, he's not. No, he's not. No, he's not. I just wonder. Yeah, yeah. No, he's not. Actually, of course, the, the trousers are cut, as so many trousers are cut now, mm. very, very tight indeed on the thighs. Liam, what do you feel? I mean, you're a young guy. Would you wear that? I would. I think it's very wearable. I think it's, it, it's a fun way for a guy to play with a little bit of color. It's definitely from the other shows that we'll review. There's a lot of color blocking going on. And I think that's kind of a big theme. I mean, I would, I would definitely wear it. I think it's, I think it's definitely. All right. So, but you're sort of international, obviously. Simon, what do you think? Do you think the um, average man would wear it? And also, do you think that he's limited himself to the young average man? Well, I Don't you think the trousers look as if they're made of rubber? Uh, well, <laughs> it's an interesting point. Uh, well, actually, that's actually, that's actually that's just um, the line. Atsuko Kudo, our label, actually worked with Richard on some of his ladies' wear collection. Right. So, uh, so we have worked together with Richard, and, and it's quite an interesting point. So he has already involved himself in those kind of yeah. modern fabrics. Would you wear it? Uh, no, I wouldn't, because no, I think right. it is for Why someone a, a little younger. I think it's interesting. It actually, I don't think, uh, I think maybe that's come from yeah. a little ladies' wear perspective as well, mm. the, way, the way the waist is focused. Yes. Because you know. it's almost like a peplum. Yes, you know, it, the, it is. The and lower I half have to say, in reality, it didn't look like that. Right. You know, we yeah. are seeing it as, as a frozen picture. Can we move up a little? Uh, no, no. Uh, uh, the thing is, is what I like about it is he's just trying to play with fabrication and line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what I enjoy yeah. about yeah. seeing yeah. it. But it's, inter it's, inter it's interesting if you're thinking that it's slightly feminine. Mm. I think Because this yeah. middle picture here, which is of sort of a strange sort of truncated duffel coat mm -hmm. with very wide dolman sleeves, yes. which as far as I know have never really been used in menswear. Mm. This I thought did look very feminine. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I don't think this is the sort of thing that people, young people particularly no. perhaps, would feel comfortable in wearing. And given his Australian background, it's very hard to see all those bruises in Sydney. Or Indeed wearing um, something like this. Indeed. Okay, let's look at another one. This, on the right here, we have a very interesting, very pale, silvery grey mm. colour. Now, this is a winter collection, of course. Um, the jackets are cut quite big, as you can probably see. Yeah. Um, I wonder what sort of age group would go for that. Do you see young guys, say, mm. under 30 wearing Oh, I think anyone. I, I think, think that looks good? gorgeous. And I think for evening, as an alternative to, say, black tie. Yeah, that would be great. Fabulous. That would be great. Or in the daytime with a black shirt. Yeah. I think okay. we could make that work. So are we saying, let, let's move up very quickly through. He used a lot of silver. As you can see, he has a silver duffel coat. Is it Which silver or light grey? Is it silver? It's silver. It's absolute silver, silver yeah. The one in the middle, which was with a creamy white sort of thing, yeah. I thought was very elegant. Is that, is that actually silver leather or silver? I think silver leather, yes. Because that yes. is quite amazing. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it is futuristic, yeah. but you could see someone, I don't know, in Stad or somewhere like, you know, Apre Ski. <laughs> You've got to be, now this is a very interesting point. You've got to be in a certain world mm. to get away with that, I yeah. think, really. Yeah. Um, and really, that's the last one I want to look at there, except that I find, and I have to be careful, because I know that Oswald's got a lining of bright orange, mm -hmm. but that's where it should be, in my opinion, mm -hmm. as lining. I find this orange, which is quite a story, this is, it's in I think it's yeah. that sort of yeah. front to the eye, mm -hmm. and it makes even models made up look as if they've just sort of seen a terrible accident or had a terrible <laughs> shock. So what do you, you feel about this are, are, are you saying that Orange as a colour has been seen across many collections, or did it specifically it's, with this it's, oh it's, no, it's, it's in about three, three, yeah. three or four, so yeah. And then I think, yes. the key, yeah. I think the key is, is I, you know, I, I love colour, obviously, but I think it's all about the right shade, see? This is too so, hot. And this is, this is bit, it's not, it's, it's, it's tangerine, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, or tango. A, a tango, it's yeah. not, it's not, it's, tango. it's not rich enough. It reads but very I, I would like it to be, I would like it to be a richer, if it's going to be that, yes. I'd go for a richer colour. Or More of a bronze. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's very spring. It looks, mm -hmm. to me, yes. it, looks, it doesn't have the warm, no. wintry kind it's of... Anyhow, awesome. generally, by what you've seen, thumbs up for Richard Nichols? And I have thumbs mixture. up having seen it. I thought it was a, a very nice show. Can we have I thumbs sort of in the middle? Yeah, yeah a mixture. 
Well, you could, yes. <laughs> yes, yes indeed. Why not? Why not? Hillary, you know, you can do whatever you like. But the um, thing is, is how big was the collection? I mean, it was probably they were all, all the collections. Like five I've pieces. Seen. Have you selected ten? No, all well, the collections I've seen have been pretty small. Oh right, oh. not the whole one. This is Jonathan Saunders, who, um, of course, is hugely successful with women's wear, and he gave me he, his was a presentation. And I'm, I'm the nuisance there. I thought that quite a lot of these were really very ordinary. Mm. I think they're very sellable, but possibly <coughs> not at the prices, certainly the prices as women's clothes command. I just felt that there was a lack of spirit. And this is something I wanted to, want to talk about really, particularly perhaps okay. with, with you two guys. We all tend to assume that because a guy, a man is good designing, or a woman is good designing, Women's clothes—they're going to be just as good designing men's clothes. Mm. Do you think that's? No. Do you think that's a false idea? Yes. Totally. Yes. 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 It's yes. totally two different disciplines and uh, totally different uh, approach. Actually, so I'm fussing with my <laughs> cable. <laughs> I'm trying to get this all working. No, I, I, it's very different. I mean, you know, there's there's almost no rules in women's wear, and there's lots of rules in, in yeah. men's wear. Mm. So there's certain things you just can't do. In men's wear, that if you do, okay. it doesn't look ma masculine. No. I think it's. I think he's a very good designer, but I just felt that this didn't quite work. It's really a little too ordinary in a way. Is that a tie yes. dye that shirt, Colin, on the left? I don't know. I didn't see sort the of shirt. shadow dye. It looks. I didn't actually see it. Because I think that's quite an interesting. Yeah, that's very interesting for men. Yeah, I think it's interesting. And it introduces yeah. colour without it being yeah. sort of scary or. Yes. Okay. And yet it's fresh and quite modern. And that coat on the right, the texture of it was actually quite interesting. If you look at it, I was looking at it earlier. A mock right. gloves. Was it a what wall is it, or tweed? It, or it, it, it has a very almost furry uh, texture to it. And it was, what, it like was a chenille sort yeah, of thing? Yeah, and it had, a, it had a nice, it was definitely not, it was not pushing it too much. A man could definitely wear it, and well, it's, a nice, it's a nice body. Because shape-wise, certainly, I think that there's nothing too frightening there. Can we yeah. move it up a little more quickly? See, there's exactly. another one of those sort of there's shadow dye shirts. Yeah, yeah. yes. That's and great, I, isn't and it? And I actually like the colour. I like the trousers. I like yeah. the, tra the trousers, and I like the shoes and the and the foot, the sole yeah. of the shoe. Yeah, that's good. And this is this I think is the beginning of a feeling, don't you? Yeah. Something? Because mm -hmm. we've seen it done more precisely mm. by Richard Nichol. Yes. But it's the same sort of thinking. You know, let's break up the torso. Yeah, but, mm. I, but I'm enjoying that. that, yeah. that yeah. I really like that look. Maybe oh, nice. because this is a presentation rather than a show, that the, the ampl amplitude of it is, is kind of a little held back. Yes. It, because it's not a show. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So there is no substitute, of course, as we all know, no. for seeing clothes actually moving. Yeah. That's yeah. when you really get the measure of them. Okay. So that's Jonathan. Now we come to Christopher Shannon, who I thought was fun. I didn't see the show. I've just been looking at the pictures. Could we have the top right-hand one? Please. Science is a marvelous thing. We're going to get it, or are we not going to get it? Yes, we're going to get it. Now it is. Ah, the this detached that's sleeve. This is interesting. Mm. I mean, it's visually to see. I thought this was quite clever. Now, Vivian Westwood do, did those detached sleeves. Oh, yes. I mean, they're not new. Tudor. But they're new. They're newish for men, the idea yeah. for men, you know. Mm -hmm. And if we go back up... But like actually, that, that's like a jacket on a shirt bonnet. Yes, yeah. So that's definitely new. Yes, I And the fact that they're showing, I think that's... that's and putting the roll neck underneath it. Mm. You're making the shirt yeah. look like it's a jacket. So that's interesting. I don't know whether it's it's, it's patent leather or whether it's ciré or what. It's no, no, that's it's that's, that's like that's like um, that's like pad, it's like a Mac fabric, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, maybe. Padded sort of maybe. bomber jacket. Can we move up? No, that's interesting. I like now, that. he plays a lot with um, what you might call a domino effect. Yeah. Black, white, and white, black. What do we feel about yeah. that, Liam? I think it's a fun way to wear a sweater. It's, it's definitely playing with that color blocking with a little bit of a motif, but not doesn't look like uh, you know, you're wearing too, too much of an ugly sweater to a Christmas party type look. <laughs> funny you should mention Christmas party. When I saw it, I thought, great the first time you wear it. 
pretty great second time, but after a while you're going to look at that in the ward your wardrobe and think, I can't wear this. Yeah. <laughs> as long as the first two times were worth it, yeah. then it's worth its money. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, otherwise, you're going to be in trouble. Okay, let's move on. But again, it's the breaking up of the body, yeah, isn't this it? Is you it. Know that yes, there is what, this. What's, what's this color coming down? This one, the white. There, there, there. Uh, right, the white right, one right. On the top right. Yeah, yeah. that one. Yeah. That, that looks interesting, like a bib, a separate. Well, it's sort of like that. A turtleneck shirt. It's is that a shirt sort of underneath? Strange. It's almost sort of. If it were for women, you'd say it had breast emphasis. You know, yeah. to draw your attention. Like a sweetheart yeah. neckline. Or interesting. That he has. Yes. Yep. He has two Sorry. or three female models in this show. Correct? Yes, I know. Well, I can show them. No, but but, I just, but uh, there's, there's something there. Yeah. I, find yeah. it, I find it interesting. I think it's very confident. Very confident. Well, you clearly you can see his women's wear influence. In his yeah, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. If That's we move cool. over to the left-hand side there. Sorry for interrupt you, Oswald. This, this I, like I think, yeah. works much better. Great. Right. I, like I think you could wear, wear this yeah. a lot. Because yeah. I don't know, because I didn't see the show, but I wonder if it's two different ribs, the it black is, it is. Which, which is a lovely idea. I yeah, think. I like that. I really like that. Yeah, that's good. And it's sort of right for young guys, it's as if they had half put it on and were busy to get out or something, you know? Is it actually three? There is there, it looks like there's another shade coming Where? here. Coming here, it looks like there's a very, like very indigo and then a black, like white oh, indigo. I'm not getting that at all. No? Maybe, it's, maybe it's the view I've got. I don't know. But it, what we're talking about really is the way he blocks his yes. Yeah, that's yeah. Good. That's well, I like think this yeah. is very confident, yeah. but also in a strange way it's very masculine. Yes, yeah. 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 No, it is. But he's, he's, he's done that transition in, from the women's to the men's in not, not the typical way that that happens. Mm. He's actually got an understanding of what men like, Yeah, mm. definitely. Right, let's move on to the next one. This is, um, oh, who are they? They're called, oh God, I've forgotten their damn names. Aggie and somebody. Oh, else. Aggie and, um, Ag Aggie and who? Sam. Aggie and Sam. They're on the front page of the Daily now, Telegraph. These, when, when this, this was the first thing that came out, and the jacket has got a very small flower print, very spring like, and the gloves are, are rubber. And the shoes are rubber. Oh, rubber? Yes, they're Not rubber. Leather. No, Marig they're rubber. Marigolds? Okay. No, no, they're the, they're the ones that people, they're like the ones where people come to do your drain. I love you know, those oh, very God. big ones. Right. Yeah, great. And I thought yeah. that made it really no, no, strong cool. and, and sort of manly. And, the and jacket is beautiful. Yeah, and it, I actually like the styling. Yes. I like the colour oh, yes. of that colour against the yes. blue. Exactly. I mean, visually on the photograph, it's great. Did that like make the cover? Yes. Did that make the cover? Was it another look, Hillary? No, no, no. no. There was the one that was on the cover of the Telegraph was more Tweedy and well, that'll come heritage. Later. That'll come later, I think. I hate this blue for women, but I think it works terribly well for men. It's a very no, I like sharp the blue. blue, but I think it's very strong. I'll tell you, for the first time, this is very rare for me. I saw clothes, and I thought I wouldn't mind wearing that. <laughs> Certainly, that first jacket yeah. we saw. No, it's good. He's oh, good. I love the and dog. lots of different models. It's, some of them really quite old, as you will see as we go. No, through. but what is good is he's using a lot of good textures, and he's got a point of view. Yeah. yeah. And I like this. And yeah. I'll take this. Yeah, this is good. This was the one that was on the yeah. front page. Very wearable look. I definitely. Very nice. I definitely yeah. wear that. It's cool very, casting too. It's very user user friendly in a yeah. way. You know, yeah, those soft good. those soft tweeds. I'm liking the fabrication so far. Yes. Application is good. Is that shorts he's wearing? Mm. Yes. That's. Yeah. There's a very good yellow, a lovely sort of mustard yellow. And these yellow. blue shoes. What are that? Is that? <laughs> they're is all that the rubber. They're all rubber shoes, different colours, mainly blue, good. if I remember. Good fun. Oh, no, it's good. I like that. This yeah. is a great look. Really yeah. like that. Can look. we bring that up any bigger, or is that as big as it'll go? It's as big as That's it goes. really good. I it like is the, fun. I like yeah. the way he's put the buttons quite wide yeah. to the edge. Yeah. It's given a lot of yeah. space there. No, I really like that. I mean, let's just and say... And good colour combinations as well. Yeah. Let's just say at this point, 
We're seeing very confident clothes. Yes, yeah. totally. Very confident. Yeah. This was a great jacket. And this is, I mean, this is great. This could walk straight off the catwalk yes. onto someone's well, back, couldn't it? I really you yeah. could wear that tomorrow. Yes, absolutely. Uh, this is, this is the one, one of the most confident collections I've seen. Yeah. This is um, chalk stripe. Can't see that, but it is. What's this? This is another light suit for winter. See? It's rather interesting that he's put rubber uh, shoes on. I mean, uh, maybe I like he's, that. I maybe think he's thinking of what our winter's been this time, all yes. the bloody rain, you know? <laughs> and so, you've so got it's sort of like if you don't need galoshes. No. You just have to wear your rubber shoes. Down. Exactly. Well, this poor sure, guy so. did not know what to do with his umbrella. He was so ill at ease. I'm not enjoying his shorts as much, but no. No. but overall, um, like the coloration okay. and I like the use yeah. of material. It's, again, this is interesting. I like the kind of town and country. Yeah. Effect. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. How I many think. people in the country would wear these clothes? I'm not sure. Oh no. What do you think, Simon? Too progressive. Well, but, well, um, you know, e even though it's very, very wearable, I think for the, well, it depends which country people you mean. If it yeah. were, you know. Damien Hurst. Oh, he's family, wonderful. Maybe. Right, no, he's <laughs> he's the old guy. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. No, great styling. Yes. Yeah. Great fun. See, I think. No, if it were Damien Hurst down in yeah. Somerset or wherever, yeah. he'd get yeah. away with it. Exactly, yeah. It's true. That's good. Right. So we like all of those. Very confident collection. Yeah. yeah. And Definitely. it's got, it's covering all the parts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's good. Great. Thumbs okay. up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's very accomplished. That looks a bit raff, isn't it? The a bit, and, yes. But the colour makes it different. Uh, yes, the colour is... Yeah, I, like I like that blue, actually. It's a nice blue. Okay, yeah, interesting. interesting. Sorry, go on. Interesting uh, trouser fabrics, too. I really liked how mm. he, he, he well, kind of played around. Well, a lot of printed cotton, yeah, weren't they? Yeah, very cool how they you played know. around with the prints, even on the vests. Yes. Told a nice little story. Again, how many looks, like, in total? Oh, this was quite a big... Well, yeah. it was part of the man presentation. So I think probably about 28. Okay. Yeah. And were the trousers as cropped as short as they appear? No, sort not really. You weren't conscious oh, right. of them being cropped short. I mean, they were, they were, they were narrow and they, were they showed the ankle. You know. Right. Okay, have you got any more pictures? Right. So, need Italy, France and America tremble? You've seen this. Are we... Finally, really getting men's fashion going. You've just come back from New York this very day, Liam. Tell us what. And you think. it's it's exciting because you know people don't usually talk about Men's Week or British Fashion Week, and for the menswear world, I mean, everyone that I spoke to was coming here, and there. And I think that that's I definitely think is here to stay. I think, you know, London is a perfect place. It, it breeds youth. It's the kind of the epicenter of menswear. Yeah. Um, I think that. It's about wearability, and obviously the collections we're seeing are, are very wearable collections, mm -hmm. and they're, there's something different. And I think that, I, I definitely, I mean, just hearing it from across the pond, mm -hmm. I think definitely people will, will, will keep coming. Mm -hmm. I hope it stays. It's good buzz in the city. Well, what we've got really is we've got very confident young fashion, it seems to me. But earlier this afternoon in, at Spencer House, one of the great yeah. buildings of London, there was a beautiful presentation done by the Mayfair and Savile Row tailors. And they gave us their very best. Right. And they were in the room settings, you know, they were sitting at the dining table, great models. Right. And they did everything that Savile Row does, like hunting clothes, um, army uniforms. Wow. And very cool. Dinner black jackets, tie, white black tie, tie yes. everything. And was it still like put in sets or? It was set, the, the rooms were the sets. You know? It was fabulous, it really was. Excellent. And um, it showed that on the right guys and in the right place, even Savile Row, which people think, oh, it's so funny, it? Yeah. Although if they're still thinking that, they're very old fashioned yeah, yeah. now. Yeah. You know, the they the look problem, terrific, yeah. and I could see the link between the young ones, you know, and I, I think they're probably going to move together mm. and I yeah. think when that happens we've got it I think, I think so yeah. I, I think I, I we will be the center I think comments. yeah I think you the, the key for it would to merge the two I think you should try to put them in the same basket yeah. together mm. I'm not sure the whole 
Saba Roy Taylor is independent of what's happening in fashion and men's anymore. I think there's a lot of crossover. They can learn a lot. Yeah, the absolutely. problem though, as you know Oswald, is that making Saba Roy clothes mm -hmm. is a very much more costly business yes, it is. Than, than making the sort of clothes Agreed. that 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 young yeah. guys can afford. Agreed. You know? Agreed. But, but if they could take something from each other, what do you think? Well no, I mean I was just thinking of the example of Tom Ford, or even before him, Ralph Lauren. Yeah, and Tom's joining tomorrow, isn't he? Yes, yeah. I mean Ralph's um, whole sort of menswear premise um, was based or is based to a large extent mm -hmm. on what happens in Savile Row. Mm -hmm. Very traditional clothes, beautifully cut beautiful fabrics and also I think indeed a lot of what Tom is doing with his menswear yes I it's quite true. traditional it's quite formal mm. it's based on something right yeah yeah and so I think you know certainly with um, somebody like Tom Ford based in London and now showing it the men's collection in, in London I think the merging if you like sort of has begun mm. or he's actually started it Yes, I think, he, I think he probably did start it. What I think is also interesting is with women, women's wear, women sort of fall in love with their couturier. I, I did a talk with Valentino quite recently. And the women were gasping yeah. for this really rather old man now. But I think that men, particularly young men, want to identify with the sort of lifestyle that these young guys are showing them. Right. And I think that's where we have the advantage. I think what Oswald said is right. Well, I, 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 I actually would say, actually, this has been happening for a long time, this merging between tailor and fashion. Yeah. I think that's been happening in this yes. country, particularly yes. for quite a period. Yeah. Definitely since I've started doing it, this has always been part of the DNA of my own brand. Yeah. But, so I think it's, it's, been, it's, uh, it's been happening. And the, the Americans are always, and the Italians, have been heavily influenced by it. I think yeah. what's really clearer now is, in a way, they've kind of been more obvious about that influence. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think they've been more vocal, or we're more understanding and accepting of our position, mm -hmm. that the tailoring you know, business has more of a role to play, mm -hmm. and so there's more of acceptance of that tradition. Yeah. So, so it's great now that is actually showing in London because that reinforces yeah. actually menswear in the UK is, is, is strong. Yeah. So that's great. And Ralph should also join the party. Yeah. You yes. Know. Well, it could happen. It I could think happen. very likely. Tom, you know, I, Tom I, coming is a big story. Yes, well, Tommy indeed. Hilfiger showed last season. Yes, he did. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But I, I think that there's a tendency to come in, get the cool factor, and then go safely back to where right. you came from. What we want, of course, is for them to say, oh, are we being too chauvinistic? Should we, in fact, be saying to our designers, pity is not doing particularly well, I no. think that's an open s secret. Should we be saying, look, it would be good for fashion in the long run if you showed there to give them a bit of the cool quality? Yeah. What do you think? Well, well I think that London is, is in some ways more of a natural place um, for the men's wear yes. than the ladies' wear because of the history of the tailoring. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and because now of the progressive thing that's happened in the last you know, 30, 40, 50 yeah. years, coming on top of the tailor, I mean, you think of people like Alexander McQueen, who yes. spent plenty of time in Savile Row, and people like Oswald, of and, course. And even Stella, yes. Stella McCartney Exactly. As well. And so it's very, very yeah. natural. It's only a surprise to me that this, um, men's, these men's collections are only now being put together in the way exactly. that they are. But it seems only, amazing that it hasn't happened McQueen, before. You can go to Vivian Westwood, yes. you can yeah. go to Paul Smith. Yeah. Yeah. All ri origins yeah. around tailoring. It seems to be, yeah. Yeah. To be a known, successful Brit designer. Yeah. Yeah. You've yeah. got to have some sort of relationship sure. with tailoring. Yeah. But I think on top of that now, in terms of marketing, if you think of London the way the city is as an international city, as still seen as the top one or two or three cities in the world, but really still the top culturally Absolutely. in the mix and the excitement yeah. and the tradition and everything that's gone on without getting you know too kind of patriotic about it all. But I think the thing is, it's a new modern situation. It's not like Cool Britannia was. That was a kind of slightly empty kind of thing. That was a now, that was a the, I think it's built on really solid foundations. Mm -hmm. And this I is what's how the why it's amazing. I think is because the benefit is coming so so clear to everyone, and, and you can see it just coming well, over I'm the menswear. I'm more excited by the talent because even yeah. to yeah. set up business, you know, when I started, it was, it was difficult to build collections. Yeah. So, but I'm looking at these collections, going where they get produced, 
how they've unlocked the key, are there the production something here? And also manufacturing has become more open. In, for example, even they're producing in Italy. You know, I think the Italian manufacturers are more open to working with them, whereas previously yeah. that would have been impossible. Well, the Italians, of course, have learned that they can't just do huge runs. They've exactly. got to do small runs uh, exactly. if they want to keep with the uh, modern exactly. movement. Exactly. Yeah. I do wonder, though, really, just how much these clothes, how much impact they will have with your ordinary Joe in the street. What do you think, I, I think the talent, to what Oswald was saying, I think the talent's there, and you can clearly see that, you know, they're not, the collections that we reviewed today, they're not so directional that they're unwearable. And I think people sometimes in fashion, they develop too much of an unwearable garment that actually, when it actually gets manufactured and made, can't really be made. And looking at the collection, I feel like it's, there, there are those pieces that, that every day mm. Joe could go and wear yeah. outside mm. on the streets. And I think that's very important. And that's important yeah. why, why this, why London's such an important city, because it has that balance. It's an establishment and it's the epicenter of tailoring, yeah. but it's extremely youthful and young and, and there's talent and the schools are here and, it, and, and, and there's all this youth going on. So if you blend the two together and you have that heritage element, I mean, think about there's no, there's no other city really in the no. world that has that heritage of, of craftsmanship and tailoring exactly. and exactly. Also, also at the at the kind of other end, well still at the retail end of that London is the, the main shopping city certainly in Europe yeah and, yes. and it's a destination for people from all over the world now so oh. really it's the perfect place I think you're absolutely right I do feel very this is thing something that worries me like many people who live in London I live a split life mm. I live in Soho where I see the most amazingly put together young guys mm. absolutely incredible then I go to Wales to place in Wales, in, in the hills, and I go to Welsh towns and everything, and the gap is enormous. Now, yeah. I remember talking to Beppe Modernese, who was the person who started yeah. Italian fashion in the 70s, really, and he said the secret of Italian fashion was not made in Italy. That came later, that slogan. What it was is the Italians bought Italian. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, I'm Absolutely wondering, correct. I'm yeah. wondering how many that's English great. guys, well, you know, think of Leicester, Aberdeen, Penzance, I don't know, that's three. How many boys? Because they're young guys. These are but, but, but I think but it's, but like, it's, like, it's, like, it's like the women's collections, Colin. I mean, well, women are different. No, but you could look at Paris or New York or Rome or anywhere and say, right, you see something on the catwalk, is the average girl or woman going to wear it? And in 99 times out of 10, out of a hundred, I mean, you would say no, she's not. But the idea filters through eventually. Well, yeah, but yes. you, but you yeah. also got a step, and you have got Top Shop, you have got the High Street. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It's more aggressive now. That's true. Than That's than true. I've seen a lot yeah. more kind of fashion-led or influenced definitely collections that you can buy at price. So a lot I'm of collaborations. As exactly. Well, you know? So I'm yeah. seeing that, and they have distribution all over the country, and I know that's definitely. Take an effect. Yeah, I so think, you know, <clears throat> Top Shop is, you know, you can still walk in, maybe not everything's made in England, but there's still that product yeah. that's made in England. So obviously, if a really young mm. customer's walking in there, he's yeah. obviously asking for it, so that's why he's giving it, you know. And I think, you know, if the it. menswear collections in London have come this far, so and quickly, this, so quickly yeah, yes. and yes. we're sitting yeah. here actually discussing it it's as the second season, right? yes, yeah. a feasible commercial. Yeah. Yeah proposition with growth potential, then it's amazing. Yeah. Because 10 years yes. ago, we wouldn't have had this discussion. Oh, no. Almost, Almost like a, a sleeping oh, giant no. kind of It would have been like a, a, some yeah. kind of weird illusion. Yes. You know, I, that I, I, I'm, I'm, like, I'm still sitting there and believe it. You don't believe because it? I heard, no, because I, I heard about the first season, and I went out thinking, OK, you know, because I, I did a men's day that they did, and not a lot happened. And I, could, I was in shock. It was like, there was yeah. so many shows, mm. it was parties, the energy was fantastic. Mm. I was like, wow. Mm. Yeah. And now I said, okay, so let's see if it can sustain itself. And clearly, it can. Yeah, yeah. yeah energy is the word. So it's great. Yeah. I yeah. mean, that's important because, you know, you've got to also be excited about being here if you're a buyer or a press journalist. Yeah. I think so also, that's what that the thing about London as well, um, there is a big culture in London, which we should recognize as well of people that will wear this stuff in London the club yeah. culture the the progressive people yes. you know the, the yes. East End is absolutely yeah. flying at the moment and a lot of these clothes yes. will get worn out in clubs yeah. has yes. been now for you know more than 30 years the club scene has been 
huge, yeah. by far the, the most diverse in the world. Yes. And again, this is where a lot of it's coming from. It's also where a lot of it will get worn yeah. and, and advertised yes. effectively. Yeah. So. Thinking of diversification, Liam, what do you think you, your firm, your father, term letter, what do you think that you are going to be able to get from these sort of clothes that we've seen? I think it, it definitely, it instilled, I mean for Turnbull, Turnbull's a much older, more established customer, but what it does is it, it, it you know, it, it trains the customer at a young age to invest into talent and to invest into British fashion. Mm -hmm. And you know, once he's hooked onto British fashion from a young age, he's eventually going to stay there and graduate to the more older established brands, yeah. whether that's Eves or even Ravencroft or yeah. Turnbull, or, and I think that's, I think that's a great thing. And you know, for that was a big reason why, why my brother and I started Bespoken, was we had a young customer come in and say, oh, I love Turnbull, but what, you know, what, what, could, I, what could I get that's, that's much younger but yeah. still has the same yeah. philosophy behind yeah. it? So it was why we kind of started it. And You, and you mentioned Geeves, and it's quite intriguing that, um, gosh, it must be 10 years ago, Michael Jackson actually went to Geeves and Hawks to get that amazing military costume oh, with yes. all the gold buttons yes. and it's actually on display at mm. Gibson and Hawks in number one Savile Row. Yeah. The very self-same military outfit so, that so that's, Michael wore. That's, that's a classic yeah. because you hear about these stories of people coming in and having these made on Savile Row but it, it's never marketed or shown. So it's great finding yeah. that the history is mm. actually out there so you understand mm. that this relationship with so-called high fashion yeah. and people in the public eye I've been having this relationship already for a long time. And Michael, Michael Jackson, you yeah. can't get any more yeah. Yeah. than that than Michael Jackson. No, quite. Well, so, think, uh, well, so, sorry, um, also, um, the other thing about London as well is the whole thing that happened in the 60s with the suits, with the mods, with the yeah. Beatles and the tailoring, people like Justin de Villeneuve, yeah. who, who really took tailoring into yes. the 60s explosion. And, and that has also got a big factor that's still waving through now. It's still this progressive mix with the yeah. traditional. Yeah. and. All of these things, I think, um, and the heritage brands as well. If you if you talk about a brand like Burberry, which you know is has come from where it has to where it is, and there are many other brands that form part of that pattern. The shoe yeah. brands, the yeah. all of those yeah. heritage brands. That I, form I part think of it. I, 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 you know, I've always said this from the, you know um, from when I started, is I've always foreseen this to be to happen this way. Because it just seemed that it didn't make you mean sense. You dreamt of it happening. You wanted yeah. it. <laughs> no, no, I actually did. But I saw it because the reason why I've always seen it that because the thing is, at the end of the day, that the craftsmanship and the know how's always been here. Yeah. It's always been about how do you get the the other piece, which is probably the business and the marketing, yeah. to meet. Yeah, yeah. and, and that's, that's always been the big challenge. I think for still is. British yeah. talent. I think it you still know? is. Yeah, I think a lot of these young guys have no money mm. at all. No. And uh, unfortunately, I, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not agreeing with that. with that. Really? No, because I'm looking at that, and I can tell you from a production point, he's definitely getting some assistance. I'm saying that there's there's a framework that Topshop put together to support talent. Mm. You get funding to put your shows on. I mean, all this sort of stuff did not exist when I started. Mm. Oh, and yeah. you know, and if you look even with uh, myself, Vivian, and Paul, when, we, when you know we were doing couch shows in Paris. You know, you really were on your own. Sure. So I'm saying now there seems to be a bit of a unity. There's a lot of designers all at the same place. Mm -hmm. So you know, I don't know if they all get it made at the same place. I'm fascinated to know where they get the stuff made. Yeah. But there's clearly support there. It's very yeah. accomplished. I think. Of course. That's, oh, just that's it's very accomplished. Yes. You know, you don't get we that from no. not getting any support. No. No. But what I do think, Oswald, I have been around a long time, and I've seen promise destroyed by too much hubris, really, and people think, oh, we're the best, we're the best, we're the best. Mm -hmm. I think we have a long way to go, but I certainly think that at this point, we are definitely stepping out in the right direction. Yeah. And from that point, I think we have to say thank you all very much indeed. Thank you. It's been very interesting, and you've been very honest and open, and I hope you've enjoyed it too. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.